This podcast was produced by ORFM Dunedin with support from New Zealand On the Air. Welcome to Books Uncovered, an exciting conversation about books and literary events, brought to you by the Dunedin Athenaeum Library and Mechanics Institute. I'm Holly. And I'm Bella. Over the next half hour, we'll dive into themes ranging from romance to quirky book blurbs, all discovered within the depths of the Athenaeum Library. Kia ora, and uh, welcome to another show. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, my name's Holly, and I'm here with Bella, who's just been in Melbourne I have beautiful sunny Melbourne. Yeah. Well, it was quite hard to come home because I also flew into Auckland, which was also very sunny. Uh, and then I coming into the cloud cover of Dunedin and it was like raining. I was like, oh. <laughs> Classic. It's been perpetual winter, eh? Yeah. Apparently. What part of Melbourne were you staying in? Brunswick. Oh, nice. Yeah, which was quite perfect. Lots of good bookshops yeah. on Sydney Road. Yeah. So, yeah. I used to live off Sydney Road back in the day. Mm. It was sort of slowly being gentrified already at that point but I imagine now it's like changed quite a lot it still seems to be in the process of it yeah our friends we were staying with were saying that they were like they're pretty sure like all the houses on this street have slowly been going up for sale and then selling for like over a million dollars they were like just they're like the literally the last house on this street they're like just waiting for the the landlord to be like oh we're selling the house oh man (laughs) yeah everyone moved it like Coburg was a thing and now it is Mm -hmm. like it was you know further down Stay on the same train, oh, yeah. uh, tram, yeah. Um, but yeah, love Melbourne. Yeah, um, Melbourne, amazing is, city. It's kind of like New Zealand city that we don't have like a real metropolitan, you know. Yeah, I used to be like Wellington is the Melbourne of New Zealand, but now I'm like Wellington is mm. <laughs> <laughs> nothing good to see there. <laughs> the slowly dying capital. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. I've never been a fan of Wellington myself. Um, so yeah, today, because we, well, you've been on holiday, so we're sort of talking like what our holiday <laughs> reads are, but also what new books uh, we've yeah. been reading. So the, yeah, new releases really. Um, it's a loose theme. We're on, well, I'm on holiday mode, so. Yeah, yeah. definitely a loose <laughs> theme. So yeah, you want to start? Yeah. So the book that I read most recently that I finished is called The God of the Woods by Liz Moore. Um, which is like a literary thriller. Um, This is her fifth book, um, but she really shot to popularity with her book before this one called The Long Bright River, which I haven't read. Um, But I I remember when it came out and people really were raving about it. Uh, This is The God of the Woods is a taut and psychologically astute mystery in which family, class and power clash against the spectacular backdrop of the Adirondack Mountains in upstate New York. Uh, It follows the story of... So it's set in August 1975 when teenager Barbara Van Laar goes missing from the summer camp she attends in the shadow of her family's mansion and then as a frantic search is organised, a previous Van Laar disappearance haunts the community. So it's these two stories told in tandem uh, of her brother Bear who went missing 15 years before who was never found. Uh, there's two, so it's the two timelines spanning the 1950s and 60s and the early 19, mid-1970s. And yeah, I really liked how the book's spun the web of not just the one mystery but the two so dual timelines and it's told from a lot of different perspectives which sometimes I don't like but I think she did it really well in this book of even when you only get like a small a small like chapter from one character and then that's all you hear from them you still really feel immersed in there yeah and what they're going through um yeah there's I really like the book talks a lot about misogyny, family toxicity, social hierarchy, abuse. And, yeah, I really liked how it all got tied up. So, yeah, it has a very good finish, uh-huh. a very satisfying finish. Um, have you read other books where they have two mysteries happening at the same time like that before? Or is that kind of a new – I mean, I don't know because I don't read that sort of um, genre. but mm. Not that I can think of off the top of my head. Yeah, I've definitely read – Oh, no, I have. I read that. Um, I think I talked about it, actually, the Michael Bennett New Zealand one, where it's, uh, I can't remember what it's called, Return to Blood. Okay. Is the, it's the second one in the series where it's, yeah, oh, yes. sort of the, when one woman goes to, she disappears. And then, yeah, they find her body in the sand dunes and there's a new person that goes missing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, I did enjoy that as well, <laughs> as you heard a few, a few episodes ago. 
Um, yeah, I really enjoyed this book. Um, my one criticism was that I would say is I thought it was a, maybe a wee bit too long. Um, and also I would recommend go into it expecting a literary thriller rather than like a straightforward thriller. Um, it does have tend to like go a bit slower. It has a slower pace, which I like because you really explore the characters and um, I thought the way she wrote the setting was amazing. Um, the author actually grew up in that area of the Adirondacks and you can really sense that familiarity of the place. Um, so yeah, go into it knowing that, that it's not sort of um, murder, murder, stab, stab, or go at all <laughs> times. But yeah, <laughs> I highly recommend it. Oh, awesome. Oh, I also, one, before, one more thing. Um, I really liked how the author used the Van La family, who were like the, the main family, who, um, to explore how the mega wealthy convince themselves that they're entirely self-made and self-reliant, but actually their lives and wealth wouldn't be possible without the exploitation of the lower class people that work for them. 100%. Um, it's my favourite part of the book is how she explores that aspect of it. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Where is she from, this writer? Uh, I think she was in Philadelphia now. Okay. American. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, mm. recommend if cool. you like a little literary thriller. Sounds intriguing. Yeah. What have you been reading, Holly? Um, well, <laughs> I've been reading Sally Rooney um, because, you know, as a librarian at the Athenaeum, which is who brings you this program, uh, you have to read everything. Well, not everything, but get a taste for it. And um, so, yeah, I picked up what I thought was pronounced intermezzo, but it's actually pronounced intermezzo. Um, and then I was like, what does that even mean? And it means a short connecting instrumental movement in an opera or other musical work. So a short solo of instrumental, I suppose. Um so yeah, what can I say? I pulled it off, I got pulled in, and I'm not sure if I liked it. Um, I really appreciate her style of writing and the way in which she can explain scenes in such short, succinct, succinct sentences. Um, it's probably why her books translate quite well to TV, because sometimes when she's just describing a setting, it's like she doesn't even write a full sentence. Like It will mm. just be like four words together. Um yeah, I I read the – it's in three parts. I read the first part and then I brought it back into the library being like, I'm done. And then I found myself at home. She dragged you back <laughs> in. Wanting to f- read it, not to find out what happens necessarily, but just because it's quite an enjoyable read. Um, yeah, at times there are like really interesting ideas and ponderings. Um, such as, and I've written a quote here, so there's, it's about two brothers, essentially, and um, their father's just died, and the brothers are about 10 years age gap. Like, Ivan's quite introverted, and he's 23, 22, and his brother Peter's a really successful lawyer, and he's in his 30s. Um, so they're both the main protagonists. Um, yeah, so it sort of flits between between each of their stories. But some of the interesting ponderings are, for example, Ivan thinks that the difference between truth and lying is complicated. You think you're fitting language onto the world in a certain way, like a child fitting the right shape toy into the shape right shape slot. But at times you realise that that's a false picture too. Language doesn't fit onto reality like a toy fitting into a slot. Reality is actually one thing and language something else. I thought that was really interesting. So it's full of little interesting things like that. Um, but essentially it's a relationship book, right? And it's all about relationships. And yeah. I appreciate that it speaks to like a certain genre and all of those sorts of things. And I definitely think she's a talented writer. I mean, there's a reason why she's so popular, right? Um, <laughs> I've written things like... Um, it was good that there was different sort of almost three characters' heads to be present in. Otherwise, I would have been a bit bored of being in those characters' heads for too long. Um, but in saying that, at times, the complexities of those characters were quite believable, such as when the older Peter, brother Peter is having a bit of a breakdown, um, Rooney's like, ability to write quick, rapid-fire thoughts. Um, she's quite good at capturing that like in a dialogue. Um yeah, I thought she was quite clever at that. And, and you know, of course, telling, like, complex relationships. Um, yeah. And <laughs> what uh, 
You've been quite nice. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I said, for me, I need something else other than sex and going for a beer or a walk because there's not really much to the story. I mean, there is, but it's just, it's a relationship, right? Yeah. That's what um, she writes not, best. Yeah, that's what she writes on. And then I was thinking about how it's interesting to consider that, you know, Sally Rooney's a young female author and she's writing from the perspective of two young men, like heterosexual men, and like, do, do men, heterosexual men, read these books, you know? And do they relate to these characters? Like, who, like, are they authentic? Um, little Ivan and Peter and their inner thoughts and actions, you know? And I think, but that's obviously, like, the role of an author to do that. And I was mm. thinking about how when um, Murakami wrote a book called Sputnik Sweetheart in 1999 and he, he's writing from the perspective of a lesbian woman and I remember my friend who's lesbian was just like, absolutely not. Like, you know, it's like... Yeah, well, he's quite famous for not being able to write women well at all. <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of... I would be really interested to hear um, Ben's thoughts on these characters. Mm, maybe we should look it up and then we can report back. Yeah, because it's... It's interesting. I mean, yeah, it is It is good. And then I ended up um, watching, because the only other Sally Rooney book I've read is Conversations with Friends, and then I ended up watching the TV series. Did you like of, it? Oh, it was like trash. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's so annoying, that main character, and how everyone is just not saying what, what it is. You know, it's just all... But I think sometimes that can sort of translate to sort of quite a, well, I know it's Irish, but sort of UK kind of sensibility mm. of insinuating something but not directly saying it. Um, so there's a lot of that. And the main character is, yeah, just quite awful. Actually, the main character in this, Peter, you're reading it and then you're like, hang on a minute, you're real, you know. He's a bit in Sally, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's... I haven't read it yet, actually, so... He just kind of... Like there's one scene where you're like, whoa, that's really actually <laughs> such a dickhead thing to do. <laughs> um, but just, yeah. Whereas his little brother is more sensitive and, you know, it's sort of alluded that he's on the spectrum mm. or like, you know, neurodiverse. He's a chess champion. Um, yeah. Interesting. I can't wait to read it. Yes. So you all know, as the, as the true fans know, <laughs> Big Rooney <laughs> <laughs> we need a name for people that listen to our podcast. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're either for Rooney or you're against her. <laughs> There's no great area. No, I mean, maybe there is. I mean, otherwise, yeah, I wouldn't have gone back to the library and got it back out. I'm almost finished it. And I, yeah, I am looking forward to getting to the end just because I am sort of, you know, I have this hope of like maybe something really outlandish is going to happen or are they all just going to keep talking about their feelings? <laughs> I'm sorry to say, I think they'll probably just keep talking about their feelings based on the rest of her books. <laughs> yeah, I also watched Conversations with Friends and I did not like the show adaptation. Um, yeah, okay. But so I did that's... love the book, which I'm always surprised because I hate, I usually hate in novels where there's like a, people aren't communicating with each other and that's the core, that's yeah. the, like the tension of the book. But somehow I find the way Rooney writes, like people's inner dialogue, I don't find that so unbearable as in other novels yeah it's interesting I mean I think because she kind of gets a little bit philosophical and mm. it's yeah it's depth it's not just surface yeah yeah uh, not as scathing review as I thought oh I think really oh, quite you kind. know I was trying to be more like critical yeah um yeah I definitely think I'm done with reading her style but I often find that like you know just read someone's style and yeah yeah no, so, it's okay, not have a little taste mm -hmm. so yeah well, <laughs> what's the other book you've got there um very different, I think. Oh, yes, it's a lot about relationships, um, but very different setting. Um, so I read a little novella called Claire by um, Caris, Caris Davies. Uh, and so it's the, basically the novel is set, off, set in motion by two historical events in 1840s Scotland, um, where so one's the split in the Scottish church, uh, where I don't really know what happened. Um, like Presbyterian yes. <laughs> and... Oh, the other one, yeah, <laughs> uh, and the clearances, which I do know a bit more about, like the Highland clearances. And then it was also, yeah, because people who they came out to New Zealand, like Scottish people who weren't aligned with the original, yeah, 
Yeah. It was the church that split off um, were like against the sort of, I guess, corruption of the existing church, hmm. which is fair enough. I'm sure it was very corrupt. It just keeps spawning off more and more. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so the clearances, if you're not aware, was when whole communities of the rural poor in Scotland were removed from their homes um, by landowners in a program, a relentless program of coercive and systematic dispossession to make way for crops, cattle and increasingly sheep. Um, it was a pretty horrific time in Scottish history uh, that is still being felt to this day. So. Yeah. Um, the story follows um, newly married John, who's a poor clergyman who has just split off into this new church, um, who leaves his wife Mary uh, to take a job which involves travelling to a remote Scottish island where he must clear the single remaining inhabitant, Ivar, um, whom the landowner is going to replace with sheep because he couldn't possibly have one man living on the island. That would just not work. Um, <laughs> um, then soon after his arrival, John falls off a cliff, essentially, oh. and is then found unconscious by Ivar, who, despite their lack of a common language, cares for him, nurses him back to health, and the two form a bond. Um, I really, I thought it was a stunning novella, and it really transports you to the Scottish islands. Um, it's got really vividly, beautifully described settings. Um, you sort of feel like you've explored every inch of this like island that they're inhabiting. Um, and really takes you into the hearts of its characters well, with really sparse yet lyrical prose. Um, there's three threads of the novel, so it's like there's dual perspectives of John, Ivar and Mary, his wife, um, and it touches upon themes of solitude, isolation and how human connection can be forged in mysterious ways. Um, yeah, I really my favourite part of the novel was um, John and Ivar learning to communicate, so it was Ivar sp- speaks... Um, in Norn, which is now a dead language, but it's um, the language from which Scots is derived, so it was existing only on these small islands. Um, And, yeah, Davies drew upon Jakob Jakobsen's Etymological Dictionary of the Norn Language in Shetland, which was written in the 20th century because there's not much about this language. So, um, yeah, she really did an interesting deep dive into so she could make it as realistic as possible. Um, I really liked the different terms that you learn throughout the book as John builds like his own personal dictionary so he can talk to Ivar. Um, yeah, there's just really beautiful words. Uh, I got some examples. So a yog is a heavy sea with short choppy waves and Dalarik is mist rising from low-lying stagnant water. So just like really beautiful words for, yeah, I guess, words for things that we don't, you know, have words for. Yeah. Yeah. And there was things like the first... First bit off a like skein, skein of yarn and that sort of thing. Um, that was my favorite part. Just yeah, so interesting when it's about language and yeah, you know, how we communicate. Just a really powerful yeah, and the, words sounding on a made up on a made up pen. I can't even say it. <laughs> <laughs> on a made up page. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's a really short novella. It's only two hundred and eight pages. Um, and while reading it, I wondered if it should have been longer. I do think it mm. could have been a much longer novel to really get into each of the characters. Um, Is it something, do you think, she'll release another one? Because this just got released this year. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a couple of months old now. I don't think so. I think she's kind of like, that's enough. Um, but, but that being said, it was like I did, it was also good that it was sort of short and like each chapter was quite sparse, like the language. Yeah, sparse writing, but very powerful. Um, yeah, I was like, I'm complaining that the last book was too too long and this one is too short. <laughs> too long. I'm too never short. happy. <laughs> um, so this is uh, Davy's third book, and she also has some short stories. Uh, and I would recommend it if you like the spare powerful writing of Claire Keegan and Emma Donoghue, who are also two of my favourite writers. That's what it was reminding me of, yeah. Claire Keegan. Yeah, yeah very Claire Keegan-esque of the two. Um yeah, I thought it was a wonderfully tender love story to the land, a disappeared way of life, and human relationships. Oh, nice. Highly recommend. How did you come across it? Was it at the public library? or? Yes, it was. I kind of seen it coming through the whole shelves, and I was oh, like, yes. I didn't think, oh, this is me being judgmental, I thought it had a really boring cover. But then I saw another cover online, and I was like, oh, that's that book that I keep seeing. <laughs> well, it like, makes a lot of difference, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
the thing that stops you from picking it up can be a bad cover. Yeah, so I think it's been yeah reasonably popular, I guess. Hmm. Yeah. Cool. Sounds intriguing. Yeah. I didn't. Um, I haven't. Yeah, heard of them before. I read Elizabeth Strout because she has. Again, I read it because you know she's very popular, and I hadn't. Uh, Engaged with her writing before, and she has a new book coming, or she's got a new book out called Tell Me Everything. Um, But the book I started with is one that we have in the Athenaeum, and it's called My Name is Lucy Barton, which was published in 2016 and long listed for the Booker Prize. Uh, It's basically about a story of a woman who's in hospital, um, and her mother comes to visit her, who's kind of estranged. And so her mother sits there with her, and they sort of it's crafted through her mother telling stories of people in their town that she grew up in so it kind of that's how the the way that's crafted which for me it I didn't really enjoy that aspect of it um so it's not linear or it's not Mm. the chapters are really small sometimes just like a page or two um but in saying that um it's really cleverly crafted (laughs) um she does a really good job of, you know, that classic, like, showing, not telling, um, such as, like, the feelings that Lucy, the main character, has towards um, the uh, the doctor that's coming in and he's just really caring and he, he says, I'll see you after the weekend and he always drops in on her at the weekend anyway. Mm. Um, and the mother's quite um, cold and standoffish. But, yeah, so in the stories it's sort of revealed that um, Lucy was having quite a pos- poverty-stricken childhood um, they grew up in a garage and uh, went dumpster diving and this sort of thing. And it's, uh, her childhood set in the 1970s and then um, it goes on to her being an adult uh, living in New York. Um, so she's got a family. She's married with two children, but they're not in the story so much. So it's a tender story about the relationship you can have with your mother and the complexities of that. Um, people have... Big, big fans of Elizabeth Strout. Um, her, she's written quite a few books that have the same character in it and her, this recent one coming out, Tell Me Everything, has the character Lucy from this story and Olive who's in her other novels and they're being brought together. So I'm sure people are really anticipating to read that. Mm. Um, and again, I think it's crafted through story. T- the characters are telling each other's stories um so yeah it's an interesting style but um yeah for me on a personal level um it didn't really strike a note with me um yeah yeah I can understand why that wouldn't I haven't read any of her stuff either but intrigued her now to see if I would enjoy it or not I'm not sure yeah it's quite almost almost like novella like Mm. it's very sort of short and really easy to pick up and put down again um so uh, probably a good Good beach read. Good beach Pizza. read. Definitely coming a good back beach to the read. <laughs> <laughs> For all Our those theme. <laughs> holidays that are coming up very near around the corner. Um, I can't hardly wait. It feels like mm. um, incredible to think that summer's coming up. It's very exciting. Yeah. Um, and talking of other things coming up, uh, some events. Nice transition. Why, well, thank you very <laughs> much. Um, so there's a book launch. For Emma Neal's new book called Liar Liar Spit, I thought it said spit twice, but it's just once. Um, so that's at the University Bookshop, and it's on Thursday, the fourteenth of November at five thirty p.m. Um, until seven thirty. Everyone's welcome. Um, and then there's a Centre for Book Symposium, and its theme this year is Books and the City, and that's on the twenty first of November. And the 22nd, and you have to register for that by the 12th of November. And if you want to do that, I suggest you go onto the City of Literature website where they have all their listings for literary events and whatnots happening in Otipoti. Mm. I recommend me and Holly both were at the symposium for the book last year. Yeah. And overall, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. I um, enjoyed it having a little segue from work. I was at the Hocken at the time. And, yeah, some interesting talks. Um, and there will be this year. I don't have the list of people that are reading, uh, that are speaking. Me neither, but it sounds like really interesting. I really like the theme. It's about yeah. exploring, like, book sh- bookshops and all of how, yeah, how yeah. book the book trade influences. 
the city it's in. So that's, yeah. So and it's my r- birthday on the 22nd, so you can ah. come along. Are you going to go on your birthday? They do have cake. They usually have free cake. <laughs> I probably will, to be honest. Like, what else am I going to do? Is that also oh, on Friday? Work. Yeah. Oh, probably see you there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, oh, and at the moment there's a zine festival happening right now, if you're listening to this, on the Saturday the 2nd. Um, probably too late. Yes, it is too late. We had things happening at the Athenaeum Library. But Yours Cafe has zine stalls yeah. happening until 5 p.m., I think. Mm. So um, get it along down there and yeah. get yourself some zines. Got it. Lots of cool, yeah, I think there's a lot of amazing artists and creatives that will have stalls there so so get on down get on down all right see you guys next time see you later (laughs) books uncovered exciting conversations about books and literary events brought to you by the dunedin athenaeum library and mechanics institute join us holly and bella every second saturday at 12 p.m as we dive into themes ranging from romance to quirky book blurbs all discovered within the depths of the athenaeum library that's books uncovered Saturdays at 12 on ORFM and online at oar.org.nz. This podcast was produced by ORFM Dunedin with support from New Zealand on the air.